Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And um, we're going to continue uh, just finishing off chapter nine. Then we're going to start looking at chapter 10. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have to study your word. And we just invite your spirit to speak to us, to guide us and instruct us, to bring conviction and power to our lives. And we pray for each person searching for truth, those watching these videos. We know, Lord, that uh, we sometimes move slowly, but we want to be moved by your spirit and not by man's ideas. And so we ask that your spirit can be the one that leads and guides in these studies. We pray um, that uh, as we look at these truths, that they, as they affect our lives, that we can be an influence to those around us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so we only have a couple of loose threads uh, to uh, look at, to tie together, to pull at whatever we do with loose threads. Um, and uh, this, so in chapter nine, we had these two different lines and the downfall of Abimelech. So we dealt with uh, um, Jotham's line. So now we have the downfall of Abimelech. Now, um, so the main uh, thing that we haven't really addressed here in the downfall of Abimelech, we have these lines, um, has to do with, because um, we did do this when we did chapter nine as a line. And the question is, do we add these details um, in this line? That is, we, in the line of the downfall of Abimelech, how do we lay out these verses? There's lots of verses, there's lots that happens. So I'm just gonna read through this quickly. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. So we're saying that three years is that 777 days. Uh, starting in 2019, November 9th, 2019, going all the way to December 25th, 2021. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. The men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to the three score ten sons of Jeroboam might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, so Gaal is bitterness, the son of Ebed uh, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trod the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God and did eat and drink and cursed Abimelech. And Gaal the son of Ebed said, Who is Abimelech and who is Shechem that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jeroboam and Zebul his officer? Serve the men of Hamor the father of Shechem? Or why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand, then would I remove Abimelech. And he said to Abimelech, Increase thine army and come out. And when Jebul, the father, or the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaal, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, Gaal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. Now therefore, up by night, thou and the people that is with thee, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early. And set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt find occasion. And Abimelech rose up, and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gaal the son of Ebed went out and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And Abimelech rose up, and the people that were with him from lying in wait. And when Gaal saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains, as if they were men. 
And they all spoke again and said, See, there come people down by the middle of the land, and another company come along by the plain of Meonium. Meonanum. And then said Zebul unto him, Where is now thy mouth wherewith thou saidst, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gaal went out before the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him. And many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt with, at Aruma, and Zebul thrust out Gaal and his brethren, that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech, and he took the people and divided them into three companies and laid wait in the field and looked and behold, the people were come forth out of the city and he rose up against them and smote them. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city, and so it was sold. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that they entered into a hold of the house of the god Bareth, so you're going to have that Baal Bareth uh, guy again, that god. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. And all the people likewise cut down every man his bough and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them, so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Tebez and encamped against Tebez and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city, and shut it to them, and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower, and fought against it, and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman cast a piece of millstone upon Abimelech's head, and all to break his skull. Then he called hastily unto the young man his armor-bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me, that men say not of me. A woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father in slaying his seventy brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem uh, did God render upon their heads, and upon them the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam. So um, when we look at this story, we had, we had addressed this already. So we had addressed it not, so we have Abimelech's downfall, so I'll go here. So in Abimelech's downfall, we have the parable of Jotham. We're calling this Abimelech's downfall that's being prophesied by Abimelech or by, by Jotham, of what's going to happen to Abimelech. And we have this, the all of the fig and the vine that are refusing uh, the entreaty of the trees to have them reign over them. And the bramble, of course, will, in the end, as you can see over here in this chart, the bramble is going to refer to January 11th, 2023. That's how we have done this. But in Abimelech's downfall, we haven't been addressing uh, these verses later. So the, we have these verses here that are in the first part of this chapter. Um, and so, you know, maybe this isn't the best way to describe this line as Abimelech's downfall, because we do have uh, in our charts already we have back here we have um judges oh that's not it where is it now 
maybe we didn't. Maybe I'm getting mixed up. Judges. I thought we addressed it. Okay, so we didn't address it. So I'm wrong. Okay, so we didn't address that part. We went through it. So we went through all of those verses and we discussed them, but we didn't draw them out on a line. So I guess I'm wrong about that. I'm getting mixed up a bit. So. getting mixed up. Okay. So we have Abimelech's downfall. And so we probably need another line. We need this actually. Um, <laughs> probably what we would do then. Um, so I'm going to change the name of this. I'm not going to call it Abimelech's downfall. I'm going to call it uh, Jotham's prophecy. Or parable. That's going to be better. So we have a line of Jotham. Then we have Jotham's parable. And now we actually need a line of Abimelech's downfall. So we need another line. And I don't know how we're going to address this then. So this is a a new idea. So we got Jotham's line now. So Jotham's line is the seven years that precede the seven, seven, seven days, and we're renaming it. So we're renaming it in his Jotham's parable. And I'm just going to duplicate this slide here. And now we're going to have a uh, Abimelech's line, Abimelech's downfall. Abimelech's downfall, and we have to then uh, get rid of all this and do do this over again. And we don't even know what this is yet. So I'm going to get rid of all this. So how do we address this uh, part of chapter nine? So we have this story and we, we've discussed it. And we know that this relates to not really the 77, 777 days. This relates to something else. And I would say that it's a zoom into um, this January 11th. 2023 date. So maybe what we could say is this is the bramble. So why would I say this is the bramble? So I'm going back to this line here. We have the all of the fig and the vine and we have the bramble. This is going to rule over them, right? We're saying that this relates to these events that we're presently involved in, right? So this is after December 25th, 2021, that we have the bramble. So even in this line, we would have to say that this is Jotham's parable. Okay. And then here we have um, this way, Mark, is going to be the fourth angel arrives, right? So this is the bramble. And the date we have, therefore, is January 11th, 2023. So now this is a new idea. So how are we going to construct a line? We're going to say that we're going to take this last part of chapter nine. We're going to construct a line from it. We're going to call it Abimelech's downfall, that it's referring to the bramble. 
from the parable. It had been prophesied, right, by Jotham. So when we look at the verses themselves, um, that's going to be starting at um, 9 verse 14. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, if in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely in that ye have made a bin like king, and if ye have dealt well with Jeroboam in his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye have dealt truly and sincerely with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice over you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, and the house of Milo. And let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour, or Milo, and devour the Abimelech. And jo Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. So this is the bramble part of the parable. Now, we say that this is the 70th week, right? So that's what we say about Jotham. He's the 70th week. And. The 70th week is going to point to um, April 5th, 2030, right? So if we put over here, April 5th, 2030, that's, we're just putting that there. And, and then we're going to say that um, this is a Ben Wick's downfall. And that would have to begin when? This makes a lot more sense than what we were putting at Bimlech's downfall starting on November 9th. It's, it's going to be the time that he reigns. So this is his downfall. So if we put, um, well, we could put here uh, December 25th. 2021. Right. So this is going to be uh, this arrival of a message. And this is the message of Abimelech. It's going to be Colin's presentation on December 25th, 2021. So what is the darkness? You guys really need to help me here. So we have a line. We have to construct it. I've given us this basic period of time, December 25th, 2021. And December 25th, 2021 is the 20th day of the ninth month. Right? So what are we structuring here? We've already looked at this in other lines. Okay, this is going to be the first day of the first month. So I'm structuring this line based on things that we've looked at before. We haven't looked at the verses to see whether we can just put these symbols here.
Okay, I didn't share the diagram. Thank you. There we go. That might help a bit if you can see what I'm looking at. So here we have a BIMLX downfall. This is the Bramble. I started it December 25th, 2021. It's the 20th day of the ninth month. And I put in April 5th, 2030, the first day of the first month. So what are we looking at when we do, do this? Where do we get the symbol the 20th day of the ninth month? Okay, so we get it from Ezra uh, chapter 10, verse 9, right? And, and that symbol is where they're going to come to repent of their marriage to the strange wives. There's an invitation that's made there. That invitation is three days. Now we took the three days to be from November 19th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. That's one of the things the three days symbolizes. Now, which is of course the three years. So when we get to the end of that seven, seven, seven days, we have darkness in that period, right? And that darkness is the darkness of Abimelech's reign for three years. So we've done this in other lines. And um, so there's going to be this invitation within three days to come to Jerusalem. They come to Jerusalem on the 20th day of the ninth month. And so there was this invitation put out. Generally speaking, we would say the invitation was rejected uh, by the Canadian American groups. They didn't want to uh, join with us in this. Um, but there is at that time light that comes, light that comes from Colin, light that comes from Stephen, and light that comes uh, through me, right? So we have all of this light coming at that time. It comes together. And then we, we would have a formalization. Now, we have in the story of Ezra, chapter 10, they're going to have from the tenth, first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month, a divorcement. And we have different dates that we mark. So, so December 25th, 2021 uh, is uh, the 20th day of the ninth month, but we're going to have some dates that are the 20th day or the first day of the 10th month. We have two different dates. So we have that invitation also extended again, and that's going to be December 25th, 2022. That's going to be the first day of the 10th month. Literally, if uh, we go to, uh, just making sure that I'm correct. So if we go in our, our calendar converter, you'll see that December 25th, 2022, is the first day of the 10th month. And so that invitation is going to be extended again um, and that's going to be, uh, this invitation is, is going to be relating to uh, the Sunday, the invitation to go to uh, the lines simply presented. So they have an opportunity to review what we had studied the previous year um, we don't know how many people watched them on YouTube, but as far as we know, there was a rejection of that invitation. Okay, so, so the divorce proceedings begin, right, on uh, December 25th, 2022, one year later. Now, we can see, of course, on the biblical calendar, 
it's it's one year and 10 days later, right? So, because <clears throat> um, it's a little bit different how the biblical calendar works. So there we have the first day of the 10th month. Now we also have another first day of the 10th month. But this is going to be uh, the end of Colin's prediction. Um, so this is going to be January 11, 2023. Now, it's not literally the first day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar, but it symbolically is. Right? That is... From these two dates, we're going to have um, Two thousand six hundred and forty days, which is eighty-eight months, prophetic months, right? Eighty-eight months of thirty days. And uh, then what we would have, um, and so we can see the symbol there, the two six four, twenty-six day, of the fourth month symbol. We have the 88 months because there's 88 days between the first day of the 10th month and the first day of the first month in 457 BC. Technically, it's 456 once you get uh, further on, right? And um, this period here uh, from December 5th, 2021 to January 11th, 2023, um, it's going to represent those period of 10 days. So it's just symbolic of that, right? 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the 10th month. It's going to be 10 days, right? So um, it's obviously going to be more than a year, right? Because that's going to be a year and from the 25th to the 11th, whatever many days it was. I think it was like 18 days or something like that. So, but anyway, just as symbols, 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the 10th month in 457 BC. You get that 10 days. And then you have 88 days. But 88 days are going to represent 88 months. And so that's why we have that. So we have that April 5th date, 2030, we're saying this is Abimelech's downfall. And so we have this first message. Um, and we're just we're just laying this out, whether this is correct or not, we don't know. This is what, what I'm suggesting. And then, so that empowerment of the message, that January 11th, 2023 date, which is the bramble, which is the fourth angel arriving, we normally put, put as the second angel. So we could possibly do this just to make it the second angel. And we could put um, in here, we could put uh, Odilia's study. So we could put February 12th, 2022. Now, let me see, am I doing this right? Now that his study is going to be over here. So I don't know what we would do here if we did that. Um, so I'm going to put this back. So if this would be the second angel, um, maybe what we could do is do this. So I'm just thinking, right? If you have any comments or thoughts, if you don't know what I'm doing, uh, So we have January 11th here and January 11th. So reason why I would want January 11th here is because 
um, if this is the second angel's message, that would arrive on January 11th, maybe. I mean, I don't know. So it's either there or there. But if it's there on the second angel arrives, then we'd have to have something else for the first angel empowered. So it's one of those. So let's look at some of the verses and see what symbols we have here. So the reason why we, we put the 70th, because we have the 70th week, that's Jotham. He's the 70th week. And the studies of the 70th week lead us to the first day of the first month. That's what we understand. Right? So we're saying that Jotham, who's prophesying this, he's prophesying regarding April 5th, 2030, the first day of the first month. That's the study of the 70 weeks. It's also connected to 2300 days, but primarily it's the 70th week. And there's lots to deal with, with, the, with the week of Christ study. So we have lots of things that we address there, but when we're dealing with the 70th week, it's always going to point us to April 5th, 2030, because that's going to be the first day of the first month. And that's going to be tied to Millerite history. It's 186 years from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030. 2300 lunar months from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030. And 187 Prophetic years plus 20 prophetic months, the 18720 symbol. And there's, of course, these other ties, the 2,640 days. All of these types of things, the week of Christ giving us that as 2030, first day of the first month in 2030. So that's April 5th, 2030. So we have all of those things, the week of Christ study witnesses to it, all these prophecies witness to that date. And so we're saying that this is... The message of Abimelech has been this history uh, of this movement in uh, first the message of, of Jotham, which is all this light that's given to counteract what's going to happen from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. Now, Jotham runs away and fled and he went to Beer, that is the well, and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. So we don't know. Just the city of Beer, it's always it, Beersheba, of course, is the well of the oath. We don't know if that's just symbolically that what we could apply it to, but it's going to refer to Beersheba. But, but anyway, we have Jotham running away. Now, Abimelech is going to reign for three years. So that means Jotham has done this prophesying in all of this period of time. He's He's been there since... 2012. And um, so, so we're going to say that um, when Abimelech flees away, I mean, obviously, he, he's going to do all this pro prophesying up to uh, all this light that comes in November 9th, 2019. And then we know, of course, uh, we're going to have the 777 days. FFA is going to make the prediction regarding July 20th or July 18, 2020, pardon me, right? And at that period is going to end on the 20th day of the ninth month. And, and we can see Judges 9, verse 20 there. So uh, a simple thing to do is to take Judges 9, verse 20 and place it here, right? So you can't see that. We would place it where we have the 20th day of the ninth month. So I just put it there at the beginning of this line. So that's that's the prophesying of the bramble. So we can see the prophesying of the bramble 
ends on the 20th day of the ninth month. That is December 25th, 2021. And that's Judges 9, verse 20. So we're going to put that there. So we have a symbol that we can place from these verses to, 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 to establish what we already said about the bramble, right? So the 20th day of the ninth month. Now, it's technically from 914 to 9 verse 20, right? But we're just going to put the last verse of the prophecy of the bramble there, because that's going to be the end of that. Okay. Now, Jotham flees. Now, part of that is the mes message of Jotham is this April 5th, 2030 date. Now, this April 5th, 2030 date is um, – uh, let me see if I can find this here. So when do we first start talk talking about this April 5th, 2030? So we've been talking about it in our studies for quite a while. Okay, so uh, Samuel says 2017. Okay, so the week of Christ study would be 2018. So the first time I noticed this is 2018, but I don't talk about it. That is, I... I put it in my charts in the studies. I put the first day of the first month as April 5th, 2030. I mention it in uh, a study uh, that I do at the School of the Prophets. I mention it just, you know, that it goes there. But, but we're not talking about it. Uh, where it shows up is February 9th. Uh, I don't know if it's February 9th, 2022. It's in one of our studies around there at the beginning of February of 2022. And we, we had started this understanding of the line study. When we get to Abraham in February, we're going to be uh, looking at the covenants in Abraham, right? And we're going to notice that chapter 12, 15, 17, and 22 so this is actually January 25th that I first send an email regarding this. So Genesis 12, 15, 17, and 22, if we multiply those chapters, we get um, here, and I'll, I can show you this. This is the email that I sent. I sent it to, to Stephen Dwight in Iran, it says there. It shows my email address, but not theirs. So January 25th, 2022. So we had been doing this um, understanding the line study. We started that December 26, 2021. So this is a month later. And so um, I know it was in our morning studies and... Uh, and I probably sent this uh, fairly soon after I found it, but I don't know exactly uh, what day. I'd have to go back and look at the studies. So it was probably on the Monday, maybe, the 24th of January. I don't know. But anyway, right after I find this, I send them this email. Um, and it says, as well noted, it should probably say, as we noted, um, 12 times 15 times 17 times 22 is 67,320 or 187 prophetic years. That is three, six, six, seven, three, two, zero, so 67,320 divided by 360 is 187. We also know that 187 lunar solar years 
is 67,920 days or 600 days more. Now, when I say that, I'm actually counting that's an inclusive count. So it's actually 186 uh, solar years. So if you take 186 solar years um, and you, you count the number of days, it's going to be 67,920 days. 600 days more than 187 solar years. That is 187 lunar solar years are 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months or 187 years and 20 months and just wrote it that way. We also had noted that 2300 synodic months is 187 lunar solar years of 67,920 days. So again, that should really be 186 if we did a cardinal count. Right, but that's an, an inclusive count. So starting from the first year as not zero, but as one. If so, so that's how we count from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. It's really 186 cardinal days, but we say it's 187 days because we're doing an inclusive count, counting the first day of the first month as day one, not day zero. If we count a day for a year from the first day of the first month in 1844, a period of 187 years of 67,920 days, we arrive at the first day of the first month in 2030, April 5th, 2030. In our week of Christ structure, the first day of the first month is 2030. Right? And also the first day of the first month in 2030 is April 5th. Right? This is how I drew it out in 2018, with the suggestion that the first day of the first month represented the second coming. So I have it here on the bottom. You'll see the first day of the first month in 27 uh, AD, it's going to be March 28th, but in 2030, it's going to be April 5th. I wrote it here as the second coming. So that's where we get that date. Also, 2300 prophetic months is 69,000 uh, days. That is the difference between 2300 lunar months and 2300 prophetic months is 1,080 days and 30, or 36 prophetic months. So that symbol of 1080 is the number of parts of an hour, right? But it's, we got this 36 prophetic months, the difference. Um, so it's just an observation that I make, right? I don't know what this study is. So anyway, we have that all there. Now, uh, um, so we'll go back. So what we're saying is it's going to be in 2022. So shortly after we start this, this study, this is going to be this increase of knowledge, right? So Colin's going to present his study. Now, I'm going to also tell Colin about this, right? So... Um, Can't remember when I tell Colin about it. It's going to be probably quite a bit later. I don't see anything there. Yeah. But I do tell Colin about this. I asked him to consider this April 5th, 2030 day. He doesn't seem interested in it at all. Because I tell them that it fits in. So I'm going to notice sometime after I notice April 5th, 2030. And I think it's going to be after Odilio's study. So Odilio is going to do a study. So on December, on January 25th, 2022, um, I'm going to send this email to Dwight, Aran, and Stephen regarding April 5th, 2030. Because we had found it in our study probably the day before. And 
And then Odilia is going to present a, a study on February 12th, 2022, right? So seven weeks after Collins' study. So that would be part of the increase of knowledge. So, I mean, we could put it in there as the formalization of the message, and we could put December uh, 25th, 2022 as the empowerment. So I think I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'll just put it down here. I'm going to put this here as the empowerment. And I'm going to put the formalization as Odilia study. Because Odilia is going to formalize. Uh, Colin study. Now, as far as a symbol of this, what we generally have is this is going to be the seven weeks. So this is 49 days. We'll, we'll say this is Pentecost. Uh, right, that's going to be the wheat harvest. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. We'll, we'll do it that way. So it's going to be seven weeks after the wave offer, right? So there's going to be 49 days in here. Okay. Let's see how that works. And this lines up with other studies that we've done on this. Now, you can see here, this now makes sense. Because we have two symbols, just like we have 9-11 is the empowerment of the first angel and 9-11 as the arrival of the second. Here we have the first day of the 10th month and the first day of the 10th month, the same symbol at the empowerment and the formalization, or not, or pardon me, the arrival of the second. So the empowerment and arrival of the second. We know in Millerite history, that's going to be a, uh, August 11th, 1840, to December, uh, I'm having a hard time speaking. I'm way ahead of myself. Okay, so we have... Um, August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844 is 1,533 days, right? So, so we have that period of time there. Um, now, we also have, from August 11th, 1840, we arrive to the first day of the first month in 1844. So... So we have 1,533 days, and then we take off um, the, one eight, uh, the 186, right? So there's 186 days we would subtract. So the number of days from August 11th, 1840, to the first day of the first month in 1844, to when the first disappointment happens, where the second angel arrives, is going to be 1,347 days. So what is 1,347 days? What symbol is it that we have? Thirteen forty-seven. Has that symbol showed up at all in any of this that we've been doing? Okay, so if we go to Judges chapter 9, and it talks about Jotham. Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer, right? 
Jotham's number, the Hebrew number for the name Jotham is 3147. Can we say that 1347 is just an iteration of 3147? I know this is rather obscure, right? But if we think about it, Iran says yes. But if we think about it, we've done this many times. We can take a, a group of numbers and we can um, uh, arrange those numbers in different orders, right? We can have an iteration of those numbers. They're repeated in a different order. And So that 1533, this wonderful manifestation of the power of God, um, relates to these symbols. Now, there's, there's, and there's so many different things that we could look at uh, to try to tie this together. So what we would have to do is we would have to uh, so what we're looking at here is a simple way of looking at this, I guess, in this chart. To try to understand this. So I need to put this information here so that you can see it. Um, is this is 9, 11. Oops, don't put a question mark there. 9, 11, in that it's August 11. 1840. So, like this. Okay. And if this is, we're going to follow the same thing. This is 911, which is April 19. 1844. Okay, that seems fair enough. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go this here. We're just going to say from here to here is going to be 1,347 days. Now, of course, that's not the number of days that we have in, in our line. But from those two dates, we have the symbol 1,347 days, which relates to H3147, Jotham. And Jotham is the 70th week. So he's going to witness to this. The 70th week is going to witness to April, um, April 5th, 2030. So we can say that that period of time, that the symbols that are here, the first day of the 10th month and the first day of the 10th month, relate to 9-11 as these two symbols, which relates to this August 11th, 1840 to April 19th, 1844 which is 1,347 days. And we're saying that it relates to this Jotham Hebrew number of his name in Strong's, right? Does that seem too obscure? Does it seem reasonable? Okay. 
So we, we agree that we can take these days and we can relate it to this symbol. And so we're saying that on January 11th, 2023, that this is what this message is relating to. So this parable of the bramble, right? This part, the bramble part, about what's going to happen to Abimelech, about his downfall, is going to occur here. Right? So that's where it's going to be. Now we know that the number of days, so we've got lots of di uh, lines here. So the number of days um, from here to here is going to be, um, it's a, uh, 2640 days plus 383 days. So we know it's one year and 18 days, which is 383 days. And that's uh, an embolismic year. It's what we call a deficient embolismic year. I believe that's correct. I need to check this though. So. Uh, So that's going to be uh, 383 days from those days. And so we'll do this. Uh, then what we do is we add 383 to 2640 days. And you get 30,023 days or 3,023 days. Okay. Um, okay, we'll deal with this first. So this is the number of days from December 25th, 2021 to April 5th, 2030. And when we do this count, uh, It's just a regular cardinal count, right? So we're doing from the end of our 777 structure to this date. I'm going to look at the comment in the chat here as well. And this would relate to 2023 to 30, 2030, right? So this would relate to this period of time from this year to 2030. Do it this way, 2023 to 2030. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, 
just looking back from 2030 to 2023. 2023 is going to be when the second angel arrives. Now, the, the comment in the chat or the question, could it also coincide with the duration from the 20th day of the ninth month, December 25th, 2021, to the first day of the first month, 2030, as 431 weeks, a week being seven days? Okay, so um, so don't quite so four hundred and thirty one weeks. So if we go So the number of weeks is, well, it's 431 weeks and six days, right? Isn't that how many it is? If we go from December 20, so, so we're going to have those, um, so it's not going to be complete. If I go to April 5th, 2030, and you can see this is a Friday. So once we get one day over to April 6th, it'd be 432 weeks, but it's going to be 431 weeks plus six days. So it's not. 432 weeks. So if you see down here, we've got all kinds of stuff here. I'm going to switch to the, this one. Yeah, so how about we take 431 weeks and seven days? I, I think that's probably better. Right. So even though it's not complete, it's not, if we count inclusively, right? That is, if we count as the 25th day or December 25th, 2021, as the first day, when you get to April 5th, the end of April 5th, 2030, that would be 432 weeks or 431 weeks. Seven days. Do it like that. And again, this will relate to this symbol, the one, three, four, seven. Right? It's just another iteration of those numbers. Okay, so I'm just doing some other calculation here. <clears throat> so now we can see that the, the message of Jotham, this number, the Hebrew number 3147, can represent the number of days from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the 10th month, one literal, one symbolic, that relates to August 11th, 1840, and April 19th, 1844. It's 1,347 days. And then this entire span of time can relate to this January 11th, 2023 date as the year 2023 to April 5th, 2030, right? 
So the 23 to 30, so 30, 23 days. But 30, 23 days is 431 weeks plus one week, seven days, right? So it also gives us those th same three digits. So is this sufficient witness for us to establish that this is correct? That is, we're taking the symbol of Jotham, right? So that's why we're tying it here to Jotham's prophecy of the fall of Abimelech, of the bramble. Right? We're taking that 20th day of the ninth month. It's giving us this structure that can lead us to April 5th, 2030, the week of Christ study. Now, there's a bunch of things in this story, though, that we would have to think about. Lots of things in the story. You know, we're, we're going to have this, this story of the men of Shechem and Gaal and Abimelech. And this would have to relate to events that are still future. Right? That is, this is part of the second angel's message. And this is where we have problems because we don't know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. We just know that there's a symbol here. Now, the symbols here are interesting. Okay, so when we read about the fall of Abimelech, we see that there's this evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. So the men of Shechem, these are the ones that are in this place where they have made this covenant, right, to put an end to Gideon. And Gideon represents July 18, right? So it's going to be the sons of Gideon, but they're, they're attacking the message of July 18, right? And to do so, they're going to to attack the foundation of prophecy, the 70 weeks. They're going to seek to put an end to the 70 weeks. But Jotham is going to escape. The week of Christ's message escapes. And it's going to um, witness against this message of Abimelech. And we're saying the message of Abimelech is relating to time setting, improper time setting. It is not following Miller's rules, using uh, Protestant interpretation. Even though it professes to use Miller's rules, it's not, right, this message, this message of Abimelech. It's based upon Parminder's errors. And it uh, comes from the house of Baal Bareth, the false covenant. And, and they're going to kill these 70 sons except Jotham, right? And then an evil spirit is going to come between this message and the men of Shechem. That is, what it's prophesying is that within this movement, time setting is going to come to be despised, right? So to me, this is something still future that happens after January 11th, 2023, So we don't know what events on this line that we could place. But what we can say is we're going to have an evil spirit come between them. And then there's going to be this bitterness, this gall, and there's going to be this battle. And finally, in the end, uh, they're going to have this tower being burnt down. And Abimelech's going to be hit in the head with this piece of a millstone. And we're saying that that's still future. But we don't know how that's going to, going to unfold in this story. So Abimelech's downfall, according to this, 
is something that still is future. We're in the midst of this prophecy right now. We saw this when we studied this in the book of Sam, or the story of Samson, book of Judges. So I don't know if I can put dates here yet, right? But we got this date way over here, April 5th, 2030, that's being witnessed to. This is the divorce proceedings, right? They begin on January 11th, 2023. Also December 25th, 2022. But that's because these two waymarks represent the same, uh, the same symbol, but different dates. Just as in Millerite history. And they give us this message of Joseph as this symbol. This whole span of time gives us the same symbol. Right? So we have all of these symbols. They're all relating to this. So what we would say is we're going to have um, somewhere along this line, we're going to have all. So, so I don't know where we put these different events. Um, Right. So we know the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him on the top of the mountains. And they robbed all that came along the way by them. And it was told of Bimelech. Now, Gaal, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So uh, the idea here is that the men of Shechem start to turn against Abimelech. And they're going to be robbing people. Right. Um, so Gaal, this, this name it means loathing, right? And it's the name itself is onomatopoeic, right? It's, it's, his name is, is really just a choking sound, right? Gaal, right? It's, that's the name of, it's a very guttural name. It's a choking sound and that's why it means loathing. Right, because that's that's the expression that you have when you find something really disgusting. Disgusting. So, so there's this disgust we could even call it that's going to come against the message of time setting. And we don't know when that is. Maybe it's when you know I thought it would be when the Trump prediction failed, but you know it's still hanging in there. Right. We still have people believing that Trump's going to become president. When he becomes president, he's going to bring in the Sunday law. So maybe it's going to take the death of Trump or maybe it's even that might not work. Right. Uh, you know, or this election to pass and Trump not be president. Whatever it is. You know, we don't know, but at some point. This message, within this message, there's going to be a turning against the entire message, anything to do with time. Now, it's already happened in part. Okay. Now, so there's much of this story that we don't necessarily understand. Um. But if we're just going to look at some of the names here, so let's let's look at this a little bit more. I was hoping I'd have this all done here, but uh, okay. So we have Gaal. Now his name is Loathing Gaal, and um, you can see here it has uh, um, uh, let's see here. This way. Mm. So it's the number one six zero. Uh, so it's um, 
It's a gimel, it's an ein, and a lamed, right? Obviously, there's the vowel pointings in there. So, um, but that, those are very, and ein is a very guttural, back of the throat thing. So you can see that that it's automatic pick. Now, it's got the symbols of 1602. So what's 1602 as a symbol, that number? Okay, it's 216. And 216 is 6 times 6 times 6, right? So, so we can see that that's the iteration of these numbers. It's also 126, right? which relates to the Sunday law as well, right? The 126, 1260. And, and so this relates to this, um, the symbol of the Sunday law. And that's what this movement is about. And Gaal, in a sense, is turning against this, this message that's about the Sunday law, right? Now, he's Gaal, the son of Ebed. And Ebed just means servant. He's the son of a servant. And then he makes this claim, who is Abimelech, right? So this, this idea, you know, you know, who is Jehovah, right here in this case, he's rebelling against the false king, who is Abimelech. And who is Shechem, right? That we should serve him, right? Because Abimelech's dealing with the men of Shechem, it's, it's his brethren, right? Um, he he is, is not he the son of Jeroboam, so he's going to be the son of Gideon. So we're going to reject this message of July 18th. Why should we be following this message at all? And then we have Zabul. So Zabul um, means exalted, right? Now, the, his name comes from uh, the same word as 2073. So what is 2073? Isn't that just 273? The message of the Levites? Okay. But also 2083, does anybody know what that is? 2083. Does it mean anything to us? Okay, 328, it could be March 28th. So what would be the significance of that around? Uh, well, that's different things, but like it could represent the 86th day of the, or 86. Or it could be like Ellen, the number of days Ellen White lived, which is 32008. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so 2083 um, can have different symbols attached to it. Uh, but I think the primary symbol here would be the 20, uh, uh, 2037 or the 2073. Pardon me. I'll just hit the number there. Uh, yeah. The 2073. So it's it's now it's weird because they say it's related words. It's the same as we've we've run into this before. If you look at it, it's just another spelling of the same name. So Sabul. Right. Now, here, when it's it's spelt differently, 
it is 2073, it means a residence, dwell in dwelling habitation, rather than exalted, which is kind of bizarre, but it's this, the same name. <clears throat> and it's quite different meanings. Okay, so we're going to have uh, um, that's going to mention the man of Hagor, Hamor, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? Why would God um, and would to God this people were under my hand? We can see here that hand is 3027, again, a symbol of the 273. Then would I remove uh, Abimelech? And he said to Abimelech, increase thine army and come out. Now, who said to Abimelech, increase thine army and come out? Is this uh, Gaal just saying, like, not really? You know, basically, it's like a brag, you know, get your make your army bigger and, and come out against me, even though he's not really directly talking to Abimelech. Because we know Zabul is going to hear these words of Gaal, the son of Ebed, Ebed, and his anger was going to be kindled. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, saying, Behold, Gaal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren become to Shechem, and behold, they fortified the city against thee. Right? So they're going to come to Shechem, the men of Gaal, right? Gaal and his brethren. And they're going to set up this fortification so that so there's some kind of conflict that's going to occur in this movement over these messages. Within these messages that are really both of them are opposed to the message of Jotham. So this is describing infighting within this movement. So we just don't know when this is. Right. That's the basic argument we're making. We don't know when we know what. We know who. But we just don't know when we can't place it on a line. And we know also then they're going to. Uh, they're going to have this battle. They're going to chase the men. And. And then what they're going to do is um, uh, Abimelech's going to burn them, right? He's going to start this fire. So there's a bunch of stuff that happens. And we're not going to have time to go through all of this right now. Um, just looking at all these different symbols. And I don't know if we want to at this point, because we've gone through this before, um, try to work this out in detail as we have with the other ones, because because this is still future. Right. So I don't know if we want to address all of the details of this. But we're saying that this is talking about the future of this movement. And at some point then, the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam, will come upon the heads of the men of Shechem for the evil that they have done, right? That's the basic idea. So in the end, the truth is going to prevail within this movement. So those that have been opposing this message, the message of the week of Christ, in the end, they're going to be defeated. That message will be defeated. And the message of Jotham will stand. Okay. <clears throat> So I don't know if I want to do more with it than that, because we're looking at something that's future that we can't we can't really fill in.
but we know it has to do with the message of the Levites, right? We have that symbol of the 273. Any, any thoughts on this? So now we have this new line for Abimelech's downfall, and it's going to go from the end of the 777 days. So when we take this bramble, when we go to these lines here, and we look at Jotham's parable, it's going to cover the 777 days. But when we get to the end of those, we're going to have the story of the bramble. That's going to be put in here. So it's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of detail that we have in this message. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you again for this study. We pray that you can bless each person, bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. And um, we ask that your angels can watch over each one. We pray for healing upon those with illnesses. And we pray that we can minister to one another. We pray for those in this movement um, who are being deceived, uh, being misled. And we just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can speak to them. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen.